I'm Josh Light with Politicket.com here with Tom Kovac, who's running for Congress here in Delaware. How are you doing today, Tom? Doing very well, Josh. Thanks for coming to Delaware. Well, thank you for having us. We, we love this state. So we actually looked at your digital influence and your IT score, and you were a lot higher than your opponent in the primary race. We predicted you to win, and now you have a really high IT score going into the general election. Why is it people are so interested in you in the online world? Well, I appreciate the, the followers on Facebook, on Twitter. We have a really good email following. We send out an email every week, and we really try to solicit input. We don't just you know, talk about us. We talk about the things we're going to. We talk about the community. And I think people like to see that. I think people are, are hungry for so, uh, a, an elected official, a leader, to listen to what they have to say, and then, quite frankly, respond. And when you make yourself available on social media, and it's me, it's not a staffer, it's not a volunteer, they know I'm out there at these events. They know I'm supporting the community. The community is, in turn, very supportive of, of my campaign. So we noticed you do some very interesting things on Twitter. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. We In Delaware, we've developed this Net Delaware hashtag. It's kind of our you know inside social media community. And it's a really great community. It's a group of, I'd say, younger people, you know, 40s and younger. And I used to think younger was 20, now 30. Now it's, you know, 40s and younger is young people, but people interested in using technology to communicate. And, you know, you can use technology to hide or you can use technology to communicate. And I think when you, you get in that communication, you open up that communication level. I have people asking me on Facebook my opinion on issues. I mean, not email, not phone calls. They're now Facebooking me and finding out where I stand. And if I can open up those lines of communications, I'm trying to serve as the people's representative. So to do that, the more feedback I can get, the better. What kind of fiscal issues have you found people are concerned about? Really, I mean, people are concerned about their ability and, and their employer's ability to keep employing people. Um, you hear the pressures of you know, the mandates under the Affordable Care Act. There are some good things in that Affordable Care Act, and there are also certain things that you know, put burdens on businesses that have led them to not hire. What we need to do is straighten that mess out, really simplify where we're going, make it predictable for businesses. Businesses want predictability so that they can hire employees. Employees want to work. You know, we hear a lot about taxes from the politicians, but quite frankly, the businesses, the individuals, are more than happy to pay taxes if they're able to do the things that they want to do. If the government gets out of the way and let them operate their business, they're more than happy to pay taxes. But don't ask me to pay taxes and not let me operate my business. So what we hear is get government out of our way to let us do what we do best, which is create jobs, make things, produce things, and run our businesses so we can be successful, so we can con then contribute, so the government has the revenue it needs to provide the services for the people that don't have the, that opportunity. What kind of social issues have you found people are concerned about? People are concerned. There are always people that are concerned about one or two social issues. And that's great, and I'm glad people have a passion for those issues. But I'd say 80 to 80 to 90 percent of the people are really concerned about economic issues. Social issues here in Delaware, you know, we, we get distracted, I think, by some of the social issues. There's a civil union law which allows uh, folks to register uh, with the state, which I think has taken a lot of pressure off. Uh, and, you know, people are concerned, is that quite equal or not? But you know what? We have to straighten our economic mess out first. And then, you know, when we're back in good times, we can focus on some of the social issues. And I think that people understand that, and people of all persuasions on both sides of that debate understand that social issues, you know, can be put on pause. As long as the government's not interfering, you know, with people in, in, in their privacy, I think people can live with that until we get the economy back on track. How has your experience prepared you for Congress? I'm an engineer. I'm a recovering engineer, actually. I'm on step 12B6. <laughs> uh, I'm still recovering. Uh, but then I went to law school. So I was trained uh, as an engineer. actually got a degree in psychology as well. As my father, the engineer, said I wanted to be the first engineer to understand people. Um, so I've got an engineering psychology degree. And then a couple years later, I, uh, I worked uh, at, went back to school as an attorney. So I've worked kind of on all sides of the spectrum. I've worked at the EPA, uh, you know, dealing with the regulated community. Now I work for uh, small, medium, and large-sized companies dealing with environmental regulations. And now I'm, I was a state representative and Newcastle County president, so I'm dealing with a constituency. So I've seen all three parts of this, and that's allowed me to be a really effective leader to say, look, we need environmental protection, but we also need businesses. And we have these concerns. We, these businesses are employers. And the most productive employer are some of the best environmentally friendly businesses. So let's strike a balance here. And, you know, in my campaign, people said, Tom, you, you, you 
see the so points on both sides, but you're not going to raise money. You're not going to rally the flag. You're not going to rally the troops. I said, you know what? People are tired of politicians telling them what they think they want to hear. People want a leader telling them what they need to hear. And that's what I'm going to do for our state, and that's what I'm going to do for our country in Congress. What are the big differences between you and your competitors in this race? Uh, you know, I'm running against a nice family man. He's been, but he's been in, in government his whole life. The two years he was outside of government, he actually then, when after he lost uh, the gubernatorial primary, he worked for a company that lobbied our state government for money. He's a nice man, but he doesn't have a perspective that we need to lead this state, to, to provide that leadership. You know, he says, you know, bipartisanship. But to be bipartisan, not only do you have to reach across the aisle, but you have to be able to stand up to your own party. You know, this gentleman I'm running against, nice individual, but has never in his 20 plus years in government service, ever stood up to his own party. I have in my short time in public service because it's more important for me to stand up for the people than to stand up for my party. And I'm going to Washington, D.C., not to represent the Republican Party, but to represent the people of Delaware. And how's your campaign going? My campaign's going great. I try to get my family as involved as I can. I have three children. My wife is incredibly supportive. My son's here at the interview with me today. So, you know, that's always fun. That's always a lot of fun. But the campaign is going really well. In Delaware, they want a voice that will represent the people. And quite frankly, their Democrats, independents, have come up to me in my time. I was the first Republican elected county council president. I've had progressive Democrats come up to me and thank me for doing my job representing the people. So it's going really well. I, I'm, I'm hoping to continue to be successful across party lines and still within my own party, keeping true to my promises to represent the people. Tom, where can the people go to learn more about you? Thank, Josh, thank you for that question. You can find me at Twitter, at Tom Kovac, at Facebook, at Kovac for Delaware, and, of course, my website at www.kovacforcongress.org. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming to Delaware. Please enjoy our wonderful state. <laughs> we will.